أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين والآقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم وآتاكم من كل ما سألتموه وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تحصوها إن الإنسان لذلوم كفار صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم My dear Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's beloved devotees, it is a great mercy from our Lord Azza wa Jal and a set of countless favors from our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that again we have gathered here today for the analysis of our hearts. Again, we have come here today to study the state of our hearts to see where we can improve. And to see how we can be engrossed in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within our lives. Insha'Allah, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives us the tawfiq to seek change from what will be said today through self-contemplation. And give us the tawfiq to increase the love of His ibadah in our hearts. Ameen. In the previous session, of the spiritual path series we talked about the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we asked the question as to why it was that they had so much passion within the ibadah and how they were able to retain this ibadah this passion within the ibadah and then we were able to recognize that there is a contrast between their lives and our lives in the sense that they had passion within their ibadah whereas we have laziness within ours. So firstly, before I begin in relation to the passion held by the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would like to bring your attention to one thing. I wish to present this very important point before you so that you may keep this point at the forefront of your minds for the rest of your lives insha'Allah Azza wa Jal and through the barqa and through the contemplation on this point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to retain passion within our ibadah insha'Allah Azza wa Jal I had the honor of reciting Ayah number 34 of Surah Ibrahim where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the nature of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُضُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَذَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions and he gave you much of what you seek and if you enumerate the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you you will never be able to do so indeed man is unjust most ungrateful so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here he mentions the countless mercies that he has bestowed upon us the tongue which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself gave power to. The mind which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself gave power to. 
And these things, along with a lot more, these are ni'mats, these are blessings within themselves. These things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given power to. Even if they were to begin to try to enumerate the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, they would not even be able to begin to do so. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions the nature of me and you, the nature of mankind. He says that indeed, man is very unjust, most ungrateful. My beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's beloved devotees, it is a great blessing and mercy from our Lord Azza wa Jal that whatever we ask for in his august court, some things without even finishing reaching the top of our lips, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he grants us these blessings. So many things we haven't even finished asking for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with them. And so many things that we haven't even thought about asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, he blesses, us, he blesses us with it anyway. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful. He grants us things without us even asking for it. Allahu Akbar. If we were to focus on the mercies of our Lord Azza wa Jal, which was the way of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would put the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon them. They would put this at the forefront of their minds. And this would allow them to do the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with so much ishq and so much passion that they would, they would be able to retain this passion within their ibadah. If we were to also do the same and focus the mercies of our Lord Azza wa Jal upon us and keep this at the forefront of our minds, then we will realize that there are many things that when we ask for in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He answers our prayers straight away and we also realize that there are many things that we are gifted with without even asking for it. Once we realize this, once we realize this point, a spark of passion will ignite at the bottom of our hearts, insha'Allah azza wa jal. And the spark of passion will be placed for the act of prostrating before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like we've never done before in our lives. The passion for his worship will be planted and rooted into our hearts. The true people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would always keep the remembrance the remembrance of the favours of their Lord Azza wa Jal upon them at the forefront of their minds. And they always kept in sight the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they did this, and if we were to do the same, then the love for his worship will be buried into our hearts. It is a common misconception and it is the nature of mankind that we think to ourselves that the blessings that we have in this life, they are from our own efforts. There is no doubt that every day we strive for things, we strive for blessings, we strive for a career, we strive for our houses, wealth, we strive for our families, we strive for things. But in reality, there would be no result, there would be no reward, there would be nothing coming out of our striving were it not for the grace of our Lord Azza wa Jal. Our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the real reason why we have all these blessings in our lives. If we were to ask for something he gives and so many things we haven't even asked for, he blesses, the, he blesses us with it anyway. Take for example our lives. Me and you, when we were born into this world, when we were born as babies into this world, 
we lived for a certain period, we lived for so many years. After that X amount of years or that X amount in terms of the period that we lived for, it was only after that time that we learnt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our prayers, therefore we learnt to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things. It was only after that certain period of time that we learnt to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember that we had been living in this life for all this time already. The living in and of itself, the blessing of living in and of, in and of itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He granted us the life without us even asking for it. We didn't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us life, yet He brought us into this world and after so many years, that's when we began asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with life without us even asking for it. Allahu Akbar. Take strength as another example. My beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his beloved devotees, what is it that gives us strength in life? This strength that we have, where do we get it from? What gives us this strength? Undoubtedly, this strength that we have is from the essence of our Lord. It is the case that when people grow older, they lose their strength. So if it was energy drinks, if it was sleep, if it was exercise that gave us strength in life, then in reality, if this was the case, then when a person would grow older, as long as he made sure that he slept the same amount as he did when he was in his youth, he drank the same amount of energy drinks that he did when he was in his youth, he exercised as much as he did when he was in his youth, then if this was the case, then a person in old age would never lose his strength. Correct? Rather, we know that this is not the case. It is not sleep. It is not medication. It is not energy drinks. It is not exercise. It is nothing in this life that gives us strength besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who bestows us with this strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the source of our strength, nothing else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He bestowed this strength upon us and it is only He who has the power to remove this strength away from us as well. Take the power bestowed within the tongue as another example. In reality, if we were to think about it, everybody has a tongue. In reality, those who speak they are all doing the same thing. Everybody has a tongue, they're all speaking, so they're all doing the same action. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one that when he gives power to the tongues of his beloveds, we get Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who spoke to a small community of Sahaba some 1400 years ago. But the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled into this tongue was such that this same message from 100, 1400 years ago is still being spread today. Allahu Akbar. This is the strength of the tongue of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were not to give us power in our tongues, we would not be able to express the matters of the heart to others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the power that he give to us through the tongue, it is a great blessing and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through this blessing, we are able to relay the bounties of our Lord azza wa jal upon us to others. Through this, we are also able to convey our gratitude 
to him azza wa jal through the remembrance through the dhikr of him azza wa jal through this we are also able to send salutations and durood and salawat upon the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through this through the tongue we are also able to convey the feelings and the emotions of our hearts to others and even now today the message i am conveying to you all i'm conveying this message to you all to take lesson from it is undoubtedly nothing but a blessing from my lord azza wa jal that i am able to do so through the power that he has instilled onto my tongue my beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's beloved devotees for this reason when we begin to contemplate on the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us then our hearts will say to us it will begin to speak to us and say o servant of allah allah has blessed you with so much so many bounties that if the tongue which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to if the tongue was to begin to try and enumerate the bounties of your lord azza wa jal upon you it cannot do so allah has given you so much that even this is the case then why are you still ungrateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a thousand people can wish for a man to have strength to be physically strong but a man does not become strong strength comes from my lord if one by eating healthily or taking numerous measures to stay strong he still does not become strong without the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it is the essence of my lord azza wa jal that provides one with strength and takes strength away from a person so to refocus your attention the people of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they would put these same blessings that their lord azza wa jal bestowed upon them at the forefront of their minds in order to instill the love and the passion for their ibadah for the worship of their lord azza wa jal into their hearts if we were to do the same then the hearts would speak to us and say after receiving this much do you still wish to disobey the commands of your lord azza wa jal so my beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's beloved devotees this was the way of the people of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas our situation is such and we see that our reality is that we take blessings that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us we take from these blessings but we forget to show our gratitude to the one who gave it to us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is why huzur mufti azmi hind in explaining the reality of our hearts he writes a very beautiful couplet he says maula dil ka zang chura qalb e nuri paaye chila maula dil ka zang chura qalb e nuri paaye chila maula dil ka zang chura qalb e nuri paaye chila ha dil ko kar de aaina dil ko kar de आईना जिसमें चमके ये कलमा ओ माय लॉर्ड रिमूव द रस्ट एंड फाइंड लाइट विद इन माय हार्ट ओ माय लॉर्ड रिमूव द रस्ट and find light within my heart make a mirror this slave's heart make a mirror this slave's heart which reflects the kalima huzur mufti azam e hind he writes in real in relation to the reality of our hearts the the reality of us as human kind because the soul resides within our hearts and if we are to mention the reality of our hearts in essence we are mentioning the reality of our souls hence we are re- mentioning the reality of ourselves as people 
حضور مفتی اعظم ہند کی رائٹس مولا دل کا زنگ چرا قلب نوری پائے جلا او اللہ سبحان ہو تعالی آئی ہیو رسٹ اپن مائی ہارٹ یا اللہ پلیز ریموو دس رسٹ فرام مائی ہارٹ اللہ سبحان ہو تعالی مائی ہارٹ has been surrounded with rust and this rust does not allow me to express my gratitude for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remove this rust from my heart. And O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Dil ko kar de aina, Dil ko kar de aina, Jis me chamke ye kalma. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, After removing this rust, Make my heart a mirror. A mirror which reflects the kalima. What does this mean? We know that the kalima is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That there is no Lord, there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. So if this rust was to be removed from our hearts and our hearts were to become a mirror of the kalima, then acting upon that which has been instilled into our hearts, i.e. the kalima, we will have the passion of the ibadah of our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled into our hearts because we know that la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah that there is no God worthy of worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. So if we were to remove the rest and instill the kalima within our heart then automatically the passion and the shawq of the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only be instilled into our hearts but insha'Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the tawfiq to retain this passion within our ibadah for the rest of our lives as well insha'Allah azawajah so in today's session we have covered the reason as to why the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how exactly it was that they were able to retain the passion within their ibadah and that was none other than by keeping the blessings of their Lord Azza wa Jal at the forefront of their minds. We also covered as to how they were able to become busy in their worship and how they were able to rid themselves of the laziness within their ibadah. Again, relating to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with so much that he himself says that if we were to be to try to enumerate the favors of his upon us, then we would not be able to do so. And then he carries on saying that indeed man is very unjust, most ungrateful. So the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they realized this. So what they did is they kept these favors of their Lord upon them at the forefront of their minds and acting upon the second part of the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed man is most unjust, most ungrateful. They did the opposite of this. Hence, they were the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After keeping in mind the blessings of their Lord upon them, they were grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one is able to do justice. No one is able to do justice of the favors of their Lord azza wa jal upon them. But you are able to be grateful. So I request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq to be more grateful to him azza wa jal for the favors that he has bestowed upon us and give us the tawfiq to have passion and retain this passion within our ibadah. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to act upon what has been said today and forgives me for any mistakes I have made. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ It is not upon us other than to advise good to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.